Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting floating umbrellas and I'm sipping on some French vanilla tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, fire red, Mars black, chrome orange, and purple violet. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number six round synthetic brush, and a number one round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type of canvas and size to the same types of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the base coat of our water. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a nice soft, like country sky blue that I'll be using as my base coat. So how I'm gonna to get to there, I've already magically made it off camera so you can see where I'm headed. This is the color I'm going for. What I did was I used my ultramarine blue and I added a little bit of white and just a touch of black to it. So what I'm in essence doing is black and white makes gray. So I'm adding gray to my ultramarine blue. And what'll happen is it's going to turn into a softer tone of blue. So I need a little bit more white in that mixture. So adding just a little bit more white so I can get it into the tonal value of the stuff that I've already pre-mixed. So maybe if I turn this around, it'll be easier for me to spin it around and show you. There we go. That works out better for me. So somewhere in this vicinity is about the color that I'm going for. And yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. This is just something that I felt would be a, a nice um, base coat because my water is in my head reflecting a beautiful blue sky so I figured what better color to do as a base coat than a beautiful blue for a sky color so I'm just gonna apply the entire base coat is gonna go on the entire canvas I'm not gonna use any fancy brush stroke because I know that this that we're gonna be having a lot of different colors or different steps on top of this. So I'm not concerned about making this into a perfectly rendered coat. I'm just looking to get a nice base coat on here so I have a good starting point for all of the other elements that I wanna put on here. So when you're doing this, you could paint the um, edges or the sides of your canvas. That way when your canvas is nice and finished, it'll look like it's a nice completed professional painting with all the edges covered and everything, but you don't have to do that. But if you, if you when you're doing a painting of this nature where you've got a lot of the, um, the base coat is, or a lot of the painting is gonna be of a similar color, you can really just use that color as your border around the exterior part of the painting. So it makes a nice, easy way to carry that color around the sides and to give yourself, like I said, a nice professionally finished type of painting where you don't 
won't feel the need to put a frame around it because those edges will be nice and finished. And then I, once I get this done, what I like to do is I will scoop my brush across the whole canvas just to kind of level out all of my paint like this so I have you know equal thicknesses throughout the painting. And then what I'm going to do is I will be using the same brush for the next step. So once I've got this done, I will wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to put the movement into the water. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I do want to recommend that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm in essence going to do is I'm going to be doing a second layer on my water. And this time I'm going to be adding some light spots and some dark spots in order to give it the essence of movement. So I'm going to have um, a little bit of darkness, a little bit darker of a blue color in the area that my umbrellas are kind of float floating on this waterway. And then I'll also be using a little bit of a lighter version of my blue to intermingle the, um, those dark areas to the rest of the water and just to give it a little bit of, you know, movement <laughs> so it's not flat. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to pick up some of my base coat, my light blue that we created, plus a teeny touch of black paint. So not a lot. I'm going to have my, um, my umbrellas are going to be floating at the bottom of my canvas. They're going to kind of float up in through here. I'm going to have a little bit in through here and then some more going up there. The area is going to get smaller and smaller as it goes farther away. So I've got both my black and my blue on my brush right now. So I'm just going to be using kind of this carefree left to right type of brush stroke in order to get these different kind of tonal values throughout this area. I've just picked up a little bit more of my base color of my blue and making sure that I've got all these areas colored in. I've got some um, areas over here that need to be attended to. So what I'm doing through this process is not only am I adding a little bit of darkness where my where my umbrellas are going to be, but I'm also taking care of any other spots that might need a second coat, like around the edges and stuff. So I just picked up a little bit more of my blue plus a touch of black, and I'm going to just kind of bring in some more movement in through here. Going to bring this all the way up into this area in through here. Then I'm going to have some more over here. My umbrellas are going to be floating over here and they're going to drift up off into this top little corner up in through here. So I've got my dark areas. Now I'm going to start picking up my light blue just to get this to intermingle with the neighboring areas of the water. So something like this. And again, not doing anything really fancy. I'm just trying to give myself little areas where it's going to look like that water is moving. It, this is going to be underneath and intermingled with where my umbrellas are going to be. So it's going to help to add that, um, that element. Now what I'm doing is I'm picking up blue plus a little bit of white, and this is going to work its way into opposing areas. So areas that I didn't just put the darkness, I can put it in those areas as well, but I can also add it to other areas in the water just to make it look like there's some more areas that maybe are shimmering from the from the sunlight. Now I'm picking up some more of my blue plus a teeny tiny bit of white. Not a lot of white at all. Again, this is just to in essence kind of do a second coat on the water as well as put the evidence of movement into it into the water. We will be when we put the after we put the umbrellas on, we will be adding to the water with the reflections and more ripples on the water. So if during this process you find that you don't come to a place where you're, you're totally happy with it, know that you will have that opportunity later to put more information into it. So I'm feeling like I've got a pretty good assembly of my dark areas. I've got some light areas coming over the sides. I've completely painted the entire 
um, canvas a second coat. So that's gonna really work well for, for my coverage and making sure that it is fully painted. So I think that's all I'm gonna be doing on this step. I will be using my piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your movement in your water, you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our umbrellas. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend, again, that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start the step, because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my chalk. I am going to be making a series of ovals. Horizontal, they'll be longer horizontally than they are tall and I'm just gonna be using this as a basic shape to put my umbrellas in place. We'll be putting all the other little details when we go to paint it, but this is just gonna give us a starting point to, to um, put them in place and organize them. I'm gonna be having my umbrellas larger at the bottom of my canvas and smaller at the top in order to give a whole bunch of perspective and dimension to the um, to the painting. So I'm gonna start at the bottom with my bigger ones, and as I work my way back, I'm just gonna make them smaller and smaller. So I'm gonna start with my first one is gonna be right about here. So if this is about the center of my canvas, left to right, I am a little bit over to the left of that, and uh, for the left side of it, and the right side of it is maybe about three or four inches away from the edge of my canvas. I give you these markers so you can see how big my initial one is. The others I'm just going to kind of um, eyeball and fly through them just making sure that they look a little bit smaller than this one, but that's going to be my largest one and my smallest one is going to be way up at the top and it'll only be about an inch wide. I'm gonna have my umbrellas kind of moving this way and then traveling up and through here and they'll have a little bit in through there as well. So my second one, I'm gonna have it right in through here. So again, I always, when if I'm trying to emulate um, a visual reference, try and look and see where that one is in relationship to something else. So you can see where mine is in relationship to here and then you can follow that thought process throughout the whole um, way if you want to put yours in the same spots as mine. The next one, I'm going to have a partial one kind of sitting or close to this one. So I'm going to just kind of put um, the, the back side of it or part of it behind that one. I'm going to have another one right in through here. I'll have one in through here. And they're just long ovals. This one's going to be a little partial one. I'll put one in through here. I'm going to go up into this little section in through here. So We've got one here, and then I've got a little series of them here. And I'm thinking to make them more natural, kind of clumping them together like this will make them look like they're floating um, in their own natural way, as opposed to some, you know, as opposed to us organizing them exactly at sit, sit the same distance away from each other. So just doing, letting Mother Nature kind of take them drifting down this waterway is is excellent. And then you can, um, as I'm going through this, again, you could certainly make yours in different places if you want to. You can have some bigger ones or some smaller ones, but again, I'm just trying to get them to go smaller and smaller as they go farther away from the viewer. And then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of little ones up in through here. These are just gonna be itty bitty ones. I might not even they might not even look like ovals. By the time I'm done just making little markers now, just little kind of lines for these little ones up in through here. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for the outline for them. So I'm gonna be using my medium and potentially my small brush for the next step. So when you're done doing this, you can um, maneuver them any way that you want. Then you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our umbrellas. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, uh, orange, purple, and white. I'm gonna have three different colors of my umbrellas. You could certainly just have one color. You could have 26 different colors. You can have whatever is speaking to you, but I'm just gonna go for three colors on mine. 
So I'm gonna pre-mix myself a lighter version of all of those three colors, of my purple, my red, and my orange. I'm gonna use that as a base color, and we're gonna do a little bit of shaping on them as well while we do that. So I'm gonna pre-mix myself my three colors, or I've already done it, I'll show you how. <laughs> so what I've done is I've taken my purple and I've added some white to it. So I just take a little bit of my purple and add a little bit of white to it. So I'm getting this nice lavender type of color as my base color for my purple ones. Washing and drying my brush. I did the same thing for red. So just add a teeny bit of white into your red and you'll just make yourself a nice light red color in through here. We'll use that as our base coat. And then I did the same thing for my orange. So just a little bit of white mixed in with my orange is gonna give me this wonderful light shade of orange that we'll use as the base coat. So I'm using these light shades of these colors as my base coat because I really want the color, the exterior color of these umbrellas to be nice and vibrant. So I know that because I did a blue background, if I was just to try and go for a nice vibrant color on the exterior, it will probably take on some of that blue underneath and make it a little bit duller. So I know I'm gonna want the insides of my umbrellas to be nice and bright, so I'm utilizing this bright color that I'll use on the inside as also the base color for the outside of the umbrella. So I'm gonna do this first, this big one first. So I'm in essence just coloring in my oval with that light color. And I know that I'm gonna also have the bottoms of my umbrellas are gonna be kind of um, submersed in the water a little bit. So on that bottom side, as you're um, hitting that, if you wanna just try and flatten it out a little bit, that's great. And then on the top side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the little, um, the little, scalloped edges like the where the spokes kind of make the edges of the umbrella pointy. So I'm gonna just take my brush and I'm gonna do maybe four or five up on the edges. I know I'm gonna have a little edge coming up in through here. So I just am kind of coordinating those little spikes right now. And you try and do kind of equal distance apart, but it doesn't have to be perfect, especially uh, along these the, the edge ones, and you might not even see the edge ones as much as um, you would those front ones. And then I just color it in. Again, I don't need anything perfect right now, just kind of giving myself the um, the, the start of the, the basic shape that we're gonna be going for. And then I'm gonna do all of my orange ones at, at once, so I don't have to wash my brush too, too often. I'm gonna do this one over here with the um, with my orange color as well. And when you get into these areas where you are um, working next to another one or behind another one, just, just paint around it, no big deal. You can always do little touch-ups um, later if you need to, just so I'm doing my outline or uh, painting in my oval shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my little um, scalloped edges on in through here. And of course, the farther away these umbrellas get from us, the smaller these little spikes are gonna be. And you know, we may, in the end, when we're doing those teeny tiny ones, just be making little marks. I'm gonna be doing this one in my orange as well. And of course, when you get to the smaller ones, you're doing much less detail. You don't have to really wor worry about perfection because as they go farther and farther away from the viewer, the viewer is gonna s really be able to detect less of the detail anyway. So just poking up these little tiny um, edges. And of course, if you felt that this brush was too big for you to do those little details, you could certainly switch brushes. So again, just doing my little oval in the ones that I want to be orange and then just popping up these little um, tiny marks for the, the I think that they're called spokes, the little spokes on the, on the umbrella. And you might find that you're, you know, you get to one and, you're, and you don't want to go all the way out to you, the edge of your chalk mark. I know when I get to these littler ones, I might find that that oval might be a little bit too big for me. So if that's the case, I just leave a little bit of my chalk mark showing and I can always get rid of that chalk mark after the paint dries with a little bit of water. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. 
I'm gonna do a couple over here with my orange color. And again, once you get your, your rhythm going, you can kind of cruise right along with these. Some, some of my little spikes might not be perfect. And again, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm usually always okay with things not being perfect in my paintings, just because it, it adds to the enjoyable process of doing it for me. And then I've got a couple more up in through here. I think orange is probably the color that I'm using the most. I really liked how it popped against um, the, the background color. So, and again, I'm just doing these little tiny ones up and through here. So you might not see as much of the detail as, um, as need be. And if you felt that you wanted to change to your smaller brush, of course, feel free to do so and do a little orange one up and through here. That one's going to be much bigger than I thought it would be, but I could make it smaller with my um, blue. So I'm going to just wash and dry my brush. I'm going to go into for my next color. So my next color I'm going to do is my purple. So I just washed and dried my brush and I'm going in for my purple one. So again, knowing that this paint will take on a little bit of the color behind it, as I'm going through this process and this paint is drying, it may end up darker than I had anticipated. And if that's the case, that's okay because what we can do is when we go to do our details on the umbrellas later, you can always adjust that value. You can also do a second coat on these. So if you go through it and this dries a little bit darker, if you just put another coat right on top of it, it will bring it into a truer color um, because it won't be as see-through with a second coat on top of it. So you can certainly do that as well. And then again, I'm just going through the same process with, you know, do it coloring in that oval and then just pulling up a few of these little spikes in through here, trying to keep them kind of equally spaced apart. But I know that because I'm just doing this um, with an eyeball as opposed to a ruler that I might not get them exactly perfect. And maybe we're seeing them at a different angle. You could always do your um, umbrellas all tipped, you know, and going in different directions. That would imply that maybe the wind is catching them or there's more movement in this water. So, you know, you could really have a whole bunch of fun with that as well. And then I've got this one up in through here. And you could, of course, choose to do a much different color pattern than I'm doing. This is just the, the color pattern that I chose. So you could, you know, have fun and make them all, you know, whatever colors you want. <laughs> It's a personal kind of thing when you get when you get doing these representational type of paintings and this is really just something that's meant to be fun and exploring all these nice bright summer kind of colors. So that's where, where I'm going for it. So here's one that's going to overlap. So I'm doing my my oval in through here just like I've done for all the other ones and then I'm just going to poke up the little pointy parts right in front of my orange. And again, you might not be able to detect much of it right now, but as we get into the details a little bit further, you'll be able to see as well. I'm actually switching brushes. I'm going to my small brush for these little ones because um, I know that I've got like this one is behind the other one and I want to just kind of bring that purple between those little orange spikes that I had. So just when you get into a place where you feel you need to use your smaller brush, then go right ahead and do it. And again, the value of this purple is pretty similar to my background blue. So right now, as I'm just doing the this base coat as it dries, again, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but once we start putting those other um, pieces of the puzzle into place, it'll, it'll make more sense and you'll be able to see them more. So now I'm gonna go do my red ones. I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna use my light red color and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process. So just putting my light red on my oval, coloring that all the way in. And then as I go towards that edge, I'm gonna go ahead and put the little, the little spiky parts on. So again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. You can make yours whatever, whatever way you want. I think I'm gonna have one over here too, as if it's coming around the corner something like that. And you might find that you need to or want to adjust 
those little spikes as you go through it. So whatever is visually appealing to you and taking a little bit more time on the on the bigger ones because I know that they're closer and people will be looking at those ones a little bit more intently than they would the back ones. And if you don't, like I noticed that uh, my the bottoms of my umbrellas aren't all flat like I had suggested to do on that big one, which I can certainly modify or um, make them a little bit flatter once we go to do the reflections and all the other information that we're going to put on top of it. So if yours aren't totally flat at the bottom at this point, don't don't labor over it because you've got um, the other steps that will help to to make that um, illusion happen. So just going to get these couple ones back in through here. And if you're going about this and you're like, well, I, I wish I had another orange one, put another orange one. If you, you know, decide that you want more up towards the top of your canvas, put more up towards the top of your canvas. Again, just creating this in, in a way that is visually appealing to you is what is what it should all be about. That one I've got a little extra chalk mark that I'm gonna leave because I'm gonna I'll erase that later. And again, just kind of getting, these ones I'm almost finding I can do just a little kind of a curved line to create them. And then, oops, I think I'm gonna go to the small brush. Switching back to the small brush to do these little tiny ones up and through here. It's just a little bit easier for me. So um, once you've got this done, we are going to be using the um these same two brushes again for the next steps which will be your medium and your small brush so once you've got this done you can wash both your medium and your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the bottom side and the spokes for the orange umbrellas. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my medium brush and most likely my small brush when I get up to the tiny ones. I'm gonna be using orange and black. And if I need to use any other colors, I certainly will. So what I'm in essence gonna do, I'm starting with my orange color and this is gonna be the non-light one. This is just the chrome orange. And I'm gonna take it from corner to corner I'm going to get, we're in essence doing the bottom side of the umbrella. I'm going to take it from corner to corner, giving myself a kind of a curved line. I'm going to color in this entire bottom section with my dark version of whatever that color is. So if you've chosen to do something else, whatever your original dark version is, is the color that you go for. And once I've got this colored in, I'll show you how to do the spokes. So the spokes are gonna go similar to what we did up top, only I'm gonna kind of bump them up in between here. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is in between, in between the top ones, in between the top ones, in between the top ones, in between the top ones. And that'll give you a pretty symmetrical look to it to, to say where those spokes are kind of poking out. And then what I do is I'm gonna, with that orange on my brush, I'm gonna put the illusion of the um, spokes kind of making their, um, showing underneath or the, on the inside of the, of the umbrella. So I'm gonna take from here, we're gonna consider the center of the umbrella somewhere in through here. So I take just a little faint line and take from that exterior spoke and just bring it in a curved manner towards the inside or towards the center of that umbrella. And that'll give you the interior spokes. Then what I'll do is I take my orange that's on my brush, I don't wash it, and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush also. So orange plus black, and this will give me my exterior spokes or the kind of the illusion of the exterior spokes. So I start at the bottom and I just kind of pull it up in a curved manner towards that spiked part that we just put in. And you don't have to do a real firm line, just something to give the illusion that maybe this is, you know, pop making the canvas of the umbrella pop out a little bit. And that's how I'm gonna approach each one. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush to go on to the next one. And when you get to the smaller ones, you can do multiple, um, 
ones at the, at, at the same time, but as I'm doing these bigger ones, I will just go one at a time. So this one in through here, I'm gonna consider that to be the corner. In through there, I'm gonna just kind of scoot this behind here and put this over on this side. Gonna give my the entire bottom area of this um, umbrella the orange color like this. And then I will kind of pop up the little spikes in between the ones up above. So something like this. And then once I've got that done, I take just a, whatever remnants I have on my brush and I'm gonna give myself the interior spokes like that. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my black paint with the orange and bring up these, the illusion of those, um, of the spokes on the outside. Wash and dry my brush, go on to my other one over here. So just wash and dry my brush, putting a little bit of orange on there. Gonna give myself my curved line from corner to corner, fill in that area, pop up my little spikes in between the ones from above, like that. Then give myself my little curved lines on that inside, pick up a tiny bit of black, and go ahead and do, I need a little bit more black so we can actually see it. <laughs> Bring up a little bit of these ones on the outside. And then I'm just gonna rinse again. I'm probably gonna hit a couple of these orange ones at a, at a time so I, before I pick up my black. So, uh, so that way I don't have to wash my brush too much. So doing my bottom line there, popping up my little tiny spikes. Gonna do my bottom area in through there popping up my little spikes and you might uh, I got to do my little inside spokes too inside spokes and you might you know when you get to these smaller ones you don't need to do as much detail because again you can hardly see them I'm gonna go ahead and go over here do a little spike maybe this one we've got my inside spokes that I can see I'll put the outside spokes on in a minute just cruising along with the um, the color that I have on my brush right now, just so, cause I know that I'll do those little ones in a second. So now I'm putting a little bit of orange and black on my brush to get the exterior spokes of these little guys in through here. And you might again, find that you wanna switch to your smaller brush before I do. It's all gonna be wherever your, wherever your comfort zone is. So something like that, there we go. And I'm gonna switch to my small brush on my on my itty bitty ones. And again, I, I, when you get to these smaller ones, it's, you're just giving the illusion of, you know, all of this detail. So again, just starting with my orange and I'm gonna cruise on the bottom side, put some little spokes or little spikes, whatever you wanna call them. And you're not gonna be able to see the detail on the inside of these ones. So just gonna give you that dark color on the outside and then maybe a little bit of black on the bottom just to give the illusion that it's got similar detail to the rest only it's far off in the distance and we're just not catching all the detail and then i'm going to be using these same brushes for the next step so once you've got your orange ones done you can um, wash and dry your medium and your small brush in preparation for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the bottom side and the spokes for the purple umbrellas. I'm gonna use my medium and my small brush. This is a similar step to the last one, only we're gonna be using a different color to do it. So I'm gonna start with my dark purple on my brush. I'm going to start in this one that's closest to me, and then I'm gonna just paint in this bottom side. And this is, again, one of those steps that you might find you want to do more than one um, more than one layer on the paint if your paint is transparent or translucent like mine is you may find that you want to do a couple of different layers so I did my first um, line now I'm going to go ahead and put my little spiky parts that are in between the other ones so something like this works and then I'm gonna use that um, the purple that's on my brush to do the interior spokes. So just giving the illusion, just pulling them in a curved manner towards the inside. And then I would use my purple plus a little bit of black 
on my brush to do those bottom ones. So purple plus black on my brush, do a little bit of a line at the bottom, and then just pull it up towards those points in a curved manner in the direction that you feel that it would that it would it would happen and you know you might want to use a little bit more black on these darker colored ones so again just wherever your comfort zone is I'm going to wash and dry my brush to go on to the next one I'm going to pick up some of my purple give myself my bottom kind of curved line from corner to corner color that in with my with my purple give myself a nice coat in through here and then I'm going to pop up those spikes in between the other ones so something like that then I will pick up my uh, black plus my purple and do that bottom side oops I forgot the interior spokes I'll do those in a second <laughs> sometimes my my brush wants to do something that my brain is saying no no you're supposed to be doing something else right now <laughs> so I'll just pull this up and then of course I'll wash and dry my brush to get those interior spokes so wash and dry my brush I gotta get those interior ones with my purple but I need purple for the next one anyway so so it all works out just taking this and giving myself those curved interior lines bringing them towards the center so I've already got my purple on my brush I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one and now I'm gonna probably start hitting a couple at a time before I pick up the black so that way um, it allows me to wash my brush less we less frequently so just put putting up those little spikes and again you might not be able to see all the detail on these little tiny ones just do as much as makes you 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 happy and you know wherever you want to take it in the in the detail manner is to, it's it's up to you I mean you you are in the driver's seat you get to make it whatever way is is happy to you and then I'm going to do this other little one I'll probably switch to my small brush for the little ones over on the right hand side again just bringing that purple popping up those little spikes going to do the interior spokes I forgot on this one too the interior spokes like that now I'm going to pick up a little bit of my purple plus black to do the bottom side of these so purple plus black and then just pulling it up. I think I need a little more black so we can see it. There we go, a little more black. And just be careful of the black because it can easily take over. So just a little bit on the tip of your brush. It start slow, you can always add more. It's tough to take it away once it's on there though. So I always tend to proceed with caution when it comes to the black, especially when I'm just using it as like a shadowy kind of accent color. So I'm going to switch brushes to my small brush to tackle the other purple ones. So again, washing and drying my brush, picking up just purple to do this bottom side, coloring it all in, bringing it down to my chalk mark. This is one of those times where you could utilize this um, step to get rid of any uh, extra chalk marks that might be evident pulling down my interior spokes in through there to give that illusion. I'm gonna go ahead and do whatever little ones are up here. And again, when you're working around these other little um, umbrellas, you don't really need much detail, just kind of work around them best that you can and then add those colors. It's really more about the color pattern when you get up into these smaller ones than it is that fine-tuned detail. So once I've got that on there, if you feel you need any of the little interior spokes, you can certainly do that. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my purple plus my black. So I can put the, um, the bottom side of the, oops, I have a little bit of orange on my brush. The joys of a messy palette. You get other colors on your brush when you're, not, when you're least expecting it. And then again, just pulling up these little black areas. This one you can't even see. This one's got a little bit in through here. And then I'm gonna be using these same brushes for the next step. So once you've got your purple ones done, you can wash and dry your medium and your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, you probably could guess, we're gonna do the bottom side and the spokes for the red umbrellas. <laughs> so this is a kind of exactly the same step as last time so you get a lot of opportunity to watch how it's done so i'm going to use my medium brush and my small brush and i'm going to go from my large ones to the small ones i'm going to be using red 
and black paint on it. So I just picked up some red paint. I'm going to go ahead and start this one off in the same exact way that I did the other ones. Do my little spikes in through there and color it all in. And again, if you wanted to add extra design elements, like maybe you wanted yours to be, your umbrellas to be striped or polka dotted, or maybe you had a favorite umbrella when you were a wee child and just wanted to emulate that, you can really just have a whole bunch of fun with this. It's this, you know, when we're, when we're doing these kind of paintings, when I'm showing you how to do it, the, this is just my suggestions for a design or how I wanted to do it. You can always take my my thoughts and bend it, twist it, shape it into something that is personal to you. So col changing colors, changing the direction, making, you know, this into maybe a, a place where you used to go or you've been to that had, you know, a walkway, you know, put different, tr you can put trees in the, and make it a full landscape. So you can really just explore your creative juices when you're, you know, learning how to paint something like this, you can use, you know, the the process of doing a umbrella in the water with a reflection and incorporate it into a, a totally different design. That's the wonderful thing about learning how to paint and, you know, learning these different techniques with different elements so you can use this knowledge and just explore and add it to, to other other paintings. Um, I got to do the inside spokes of that in a second, but I really wanted to paint the outside of this one <laughs> before I did that apparently. So just going to kind of bring this up here. I will use the black um, for the outside spokes in a second, but apparently my, my brush is just wanting to do the red part right now. So I got those done. I'm going to now pick up a tiny bit of black with my red and I'll do these bigger ones with my black and my red, just kind of cruising along the bottom of it and then pulling pulling it up towards these um, towards these spiky areas something like that that works for me using the remnants on my brush I feel like I have plenty on there right now to just kind of cruise along and do the same thing over on this one I'm going to switch my brush to the small brush and right about now because that's going to be too big for me on that one so red and black to take care of these other um, bottoms of these little guys and through here and again just making it nice and dark at the bottom with the red and the black and pulling up the illusion of these um, the the marks that the, those things are making and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm picking up some red paint I'm going to put the um, bottom side on these smaller ones into here and I see all that I do have some chalk marks still left on the sides of some of these so I will take care of that with a little bit of water in in a minute but just getting my red exterior parts on these little guys in through here and then I'm going to put the interior little spokes if I can see them I think I can see a couple of these there we go and now I'm going to pick up red plus a little bit of black for those bottom areas so red plus a little bit of black and then just pull it up in wherever I feel that I can but again these tiny ones I don't get much detail on them and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so these little chalk marks you can just get rid of them with water so I just washed my brush put a little bit of water on it and if I have extra chalk mark I'll just go through and get rid of it with a little bit of water and then you can wash and dry both of these oh the small brush for the next step and just get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the highlights on the top of the umbrellas. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using white plus each one of my light colors. So I use light orange and white, light purple and white, and light red and white. And what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a highlight right on the top of this back side. So I've got my small brush. I'll tackle my orange ones first. So I have light orange plus white on my brush at the same time. And really what I'm gonna do is just a little kind of, whoops, that was a little out of control. <laughs> a little kind of swipe up at the top in through here. 
And then if you want to, you can blend it down into the interior of the umbrella. Not necessary, but if you find that you want to have a little bit smoother transition as it goes down into the umbrella, feel free to do so. Not, you know, again, not necessary, but if you want to give it that extra, that extra oomph, that would, that would totally do it. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for all my orange ones right now. I've got my orange and my white and just kind of swiping the top of that. And then if I feel I want to blend it down a little bit, you can go right ahead and do so. Orange and white is just gonna keep repeating. As I get to the smaller ones, I'm not even gonna be concerned about blending it down. This is just gonna give me um, a nice bright kind of highlight on the, on the edge of them, and that way it'll look like the sunshine is hitting them. And if, the, if you feel you wanna go more white, go more white. I just like using a combination of both the colors so that way it gives me um, a light tonal value of that orange as opposed to going full white and making all of them look, you know, all the different colored umbrellas looking the same. This will make my highlight on my orange ones look like a highlight on orange and not just white. So again, just a little, a little trick to doing it. And as I go up towards these tiny ones, I'm really just kind of making a little a little tiny mark, but maybe a little more white on these just to make them a touch more brighter. There we go. And then I'm just gonna switch to my next color. So my next color, I'll do some purple ones. So I'm gonna go for my lavender or my light purple, plus a little bit of white on my brush, both on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna do the same, the same process. So a little bit of this curved line up at the top. And this also helps to make it stand out from that background um, blue. So if your if your tonal values were too similar from like your lavender to your light blue of your water, this will help to make it stand out and add that extra bit of contrast so you could see the difference between the two. And then I'm just going to go ahead and give myself this little um, bright spot. And of course, if you you know if you needed to reshape the the tips of your umbrella this is a great time to do it this is that time where you get to make any of those little tweaks and modifications and then again i just keep adding my uh, light purple and white onto my brush and then as i get into these smaller ones i'll just cruise right along with a quick swipe in between those spokes so light purple and white and again as you get into these smaller ones if you need to amp up the white a bit more or if you need to dull it down feel free to do so i think that one needs a little bit more white so it can stand out in front of that orange one and try not to get confused i almost just put this on my on the orange one so i'm just kind of keep your brain straight especially when you go into these tinier ones and i right now i'm just dotting the the little tips of the umbrella just so we can get that little that little bit of brightness on the edges. And I'm now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and go in for my reds. So wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna be using my light red plus white on my brush at the same time. And I'm doing the same process. I think that I want some nice lightness in through there. So it stands out in front of that orange one and then blend it down on these bigger ones if you feel you can or if you want to. That's again, not necessary, but if you wanna give it that extra bit of oomph, that's the way to do it. And then again, just my light, oops, I put regular red, my light red and white on my brush at the same time. Gonna go in for this guy in through here. And again, if you felt you needed a little more white, feel free to, to um, do that. So that'll give you that little extra punch. And it, when this dries, you might find that as it's drying that you wanna go a little bit more bold with the, with the lightness, and if that's the case, then feel free, feel free to do so. Oh, that was a bit white. I might come back with a little bit more of my light red on top of that one. And then, let's see, this one I think is red in through here. And if you oops on the colors like I do sometimes, that's okay. <laughs> Nobody's gonna know except for you and I. And then that in through there. And then just make any little tweaks or adjustments that you want, and we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next Mm, yeah, we're gonna use the medium brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the reflections of our umbrellas. We still have handles to go and the reflections of the handles, but we're just gonna be doing the reflections of the main body of the umbrellas right now. I'm gonna be using my medium brush for the whole time, I think. <laughs> if I switch to my small brush, of course I'll let you know. But all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using the main color, so orange, purple, and red, and a little bit of black as well. So I'm gonna start with my orange one, and what's gonna happen, because I did not put a light color on top of my background, is this orange is gonna look different when it dries than this color orange and this color orange. So this, in essence, is a third tone of orange that I'm using, and I'm just gonna kind of bring it down in a similar type of shape to the umbrella above it. So this particular one gets to get hidden or go off of my canvas because I'm so close to the bottom of my canvas. And what I do is, depending on how much you want the umbrella to be out of the water, you can bring this shadow kind of in a little bit like this. So that way it looks like part of it is out of the water and part of it is in the water. And then what I'm gonna do is I would pick up a tiny bit of black paint because this is the underside of the umbrella. So I picked up a little bit of black paint. I'm gonna give myself one, it would be the shadow, and two, it's kind of given me the dark essence of those spokes. So I can bring it out in a similar way to what those upper um, spokes showed up there. And that's gonna give me the reflection of the underside of that um, umbrella. So I'm just gonna probably do all of my orange ones at first and then all of my red and purple ones at, at their own as well. So I'm gonna just start with orange. I'll do orange first for the reflection and then I'll bring the blacks, um, the black color in. And when you can see the top of it, you can what you, what you can do is you can bump out the little spiky parts in that reflection as well, just to give it a little bit of authenticity. This one, the red, the red reflection will probably be in front of this orange one in a minute, but this will just get us started. I've got a little orange one over here, so I'm just gonna kind of cruise along on the orange ones that, that I can see. And the reflection doesn't have to be a mirror image. It can be skewed a little bit because of the, the, the movement in the water. It can, you know, really take on a little bit different of a shape if you, you know, if you do that by accident or on purpose, it's totally fine. It can be wider, it can be more narrow, it can be at an angle. So just know that reflections are fun because they don't always have to be a mirror image. They can take on, you know, whatever's happening in that water. So just know that if it's not if it's not perfect, it's okay. When I get to these small ones, again, it's probably just gonna be more about making sure I have the right color pattern underneath it. This one, I've got just little ones in through here. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black with my orange to get that, that dark area underneath, give myself those little essence of the spokes, and then just do that to all of them. So a little bit of black, with the orange on my brush. And again, if you felt that you needed to go for a smaller brush, feel free to do so, but I think this is gonna work out for me right now, just kind of almost putting that shadowy part on underneath there. And we also have ripples that are gonna happen on the water in a little bit, so just know that there's another step for that too. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I think I'm gonna do my purple ones next. So washing and dry my brush, picking up my dark purple color, gonna give myself, again, the, the generic kind of shape that I'm seeing. So just kind of riding this along the bottom, bringing it out to the left, and then maybe bringing a couple of those spikes in through here. And I'm, again, I know that my purple is very transparent or translucent, so I might opt to do a couple of layers on my purple depending on if it dries too light or too dark or you know not the right shade for me, I can certainly do another layer, but that's how I'm gonna start that one. Maybe I need to pull this up just a little bit more. Pull it down into the water just a little bit more. There we go. And then do the same thing for this one. Again, just leaving some of that um, space between the umbrella and the edge, especially um, you know if I want it to look kind of higher up in the water so something like this will work. 
like that. And I suppose if you, you know, you want to be mindful of the number of spikes, if you have an extra one, I think there'd be one, I don't know, this doesn't look right to me. So we're just going to pull that up a little bit. So that's one, two, three, four, there we go. <laughs> so just be mindful of the number of spikes. And again, it doesn't have, it can be rippled too. We're going to be putting a, um, a ripply edge on the water or, or a rippled kind of look to the water. So if yours, you know, if your reflection isn't perfect, we get to hide it with the, the movement of more movement of the water that we'll be putting on later. So I'm just trying to be mindful of how my, um, you know, how many spikes I have or the spokes that I have above. But again, as I'm getting into these smaller ones, it, it doesn't even really, you know, you can't really see the evidence of it as much, especially when we're getting farther away. It's, you know, less detail is evident. This one, I'm just seeing the little side of it. I got a little bit in through here that I'll be doing. I got one underneath here and then one in through here. And then I'm gonna do my, my black. So I'm gonna pick up black with the purple that's on my brush. Gonna do my shadowy area underneath here and then pull those spikes or you know the illusion of them in, this, in a similar direction to what they were above. Do the same thing here. And I'm working much looser and freer and, and without um, care if the edges are perfect because again, it's in the water. It's gonna be just the illusion that we're, that we're giving this portion of the painting. So that's why I go faster during this part, I'm, I'm okay if it's too dark or it turns darker than I had anticipated because I'm just going for that essence of it. So I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush now and go ahead and do my red ones. So wash and dry my brush, pick up my red paint and repeat that step. So just bringing this out to the left and to the right and then just being mindful of my, my spokes that I've got in here and then this one's gonna tuck right behind this guy in through here. So just bringing that out. And if you, you bump into it like I just did, you can clean up those edges afterwards with a little bit of your purple from your for your purple umbrella. So like that. And again, the bigger ones matter a little bit more. So however much detail you want to put on those is totally up to you. And we've got a spike here, here, here. And that one goes off the edge. So just being mindful of those. And they could even be skewed out to the side too. So if the, if the water is pulling it a little bit further, you know, pulling that reflection a little bit further, that would make sense too. So if, you know, some of them go a little bit further out to the side, totally fine. It all works out. It'll just tell the story of how that water is moving. So you don't, you know, you don't even need to explain an oops <laughs> when it comes to water because you just, oh, I, I, speaking of an oops, I didn't even put an orange underneath there. I'll have to hit that in a second. Um, but you can just say that the water is moving it in a unique way. So you don't need to, if something happens in a way that you didn't expect it, you can just blame it on the water leave it on the water it's all it'll all be good I'm gonna before I pick up my black I'm gonna hit this one before I forget it so I washing and dry my brush I'm picking up a little bit of orange so I can hit this little guy in through here make sure I have all of my my T's crossed and my eyes dotted now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush I'm gonna go in for my red and my black in order to get the underside um, darkness in through here so red and black and then just pulling it out in the direction of those um, spokes, something like that. And gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of them. So red and black, and just pulling it out in the direction of those spokes. They almost, this almost feels like I'm painting flowers right now, cause I'm just, you know, going for the, the dark areas and pulling it out like a, oops, I forgot that red one. <laughs> See, sometimes my head, I was taught, I saw that one, but I forgot to do that one. There's a lot of umbrellas for me to, to attend to right now. I just washed and dried my brush and put some red on my brush to make sure that I've got this one as well. And then I'll pick up my black and get my little black area in through here. So red and black, just to attend to these little guys, make sure that I've got it all. And I've probably missed 
one, but I will be certain to look them all over before I call it done to make sure that I've got all of them on there. And this, again, just putting a little tiny, oh, see, I missed another little red one there. Um, washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of red on my brush to get this little guy in through here. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your reflections done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the handles for the umbrellas. I'm gonna be using my small brush, and I'm gonna be using black and white paint. I'm gonna start them all with black, with black, and then I'm just gonna put a quick light highlight on them just to give them a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna be doing all of mine vertical, but if you've chosen to make yours, your umbrellas kind of tipped, you could certainly put them at angles. It's totally up to you. Um, how I'm gonna determine how long the handle is gonna go so I can keep a nice perspective um, making these ones longer and those ones shorter is I'm going to use about half the distance of my the width of my umbrella as a length for my handle. So that way it'll keep it consistent in proportion throughout the whole thing. So I'm gonna start with some black paint on my brush. I do recommend if um, you want your lines to be nice and clean and, and smooth that you actually put a tiny bit of water in your black paint or thin it out with liquid medium or something so you have a nice thin consistency so you can get some nice clean lines. You could also plan out these handles with your chalk or with pencil so that way you have them at the right length or at the you know the right place that you want. I'm going to use my medium brush for these bigger ones so I can as a measuring tool so I can make sure that I've got them in the right um, height, but you could certainly eyeball it or do whatever you want. So if this is about half the distance, what I can do is just swing this up to the top and give myself a little bit of a marker and then draw a vertical line that comes down to my, uh, to the top part of the exterior of my umbrella. I'm gonna do all my vertical lines first and then I'll put the little um, hook on it afterwards. And when I get to the smaller ones, I'll most likely just kind of eyeball the length of those ones. Um, but right now, as I'm in these bigger ones, I just wanna make sure that I have a pretty good idea and put a good length on them um, so I don't overdo it. Because sometimes when I'm painting, I really, um, my, as you saw earlier, my brush can kind of take control whereas my brain does not. <laughs> so when I have these these um, things that I feel should be of a certain way, I definitely try and use every tool that I can in order to make sure that my um, that my brush doesn't take over my brain. <laughs> and of course these don't have to be perfect, but just something along, you know, a similar, length will totally work. I'm getting into a spot where I feel like I can almost eyeball the halfway length of it. So I think I'm gonna get rid of my measuring tool for now because I can kind of see that that's about maybe an inch and a half. So I'll just kind of do this. And now I can kind of just cruise along because I, I'm, these smaller ones are a little bit easier for me to eyeball. And if I don't get it perfect, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that as I usually am. As I'm going to the smaller ones too, I'm not pressing as hard with my brush so that way my line is a little bit more narrow. Um, and of course you could certainly go in whatever order you want. It's totally up to you. You might find that going you know, from right to left versus left to right works. I, again, I've got some water on my brush too, so this is helping me to get these nice narrow um, lines. And I also take my brush and I like to spin it on the side of my palette in my paint. That helps to give me a nice pointy tip to my brush as well. So that's just another, another quick tip that helps me um, have the or maintain the control on my brush. And again, just getting these little tiny ones up in through here. You're hardly going to see them, but, you know, paying the same attention all over the canvas makes the whole canvas 
feel appreciated <laughs> and feel like it has been attended to in, in a proper way and in a full way. And then once I've got that on, I'm going to give myself some hooks or it's for, you know, for somebody to hang on to. So just going to kind of take this up. I need to reload my brush here and you can put them in all different, um, angles. So maybe, maybe this one comes at this angle. Maybe this one comes the other way. And if you come to a place where you feel like you overdid your line, like it's too wide or you want to, you know, clean it up, you can certainly clean it up with some of your background color or thin it out, you know, with a, with the lighter um, shade that we're going to be putting on in a minute, the little highlight. You can bring this kind of close to the um, umbrella. That'll make it look like it's turned a little bit further towards us so you don't have to make them all going in the same exact angle maybe this one is kind of coming right at us so it just looks like a thick part to it oh i missed one right in through here see i was just cruising right along earlier and i totally missed this one so again as you're going farther away you just want to make them a little bit shorter or smaller or you know less evident and then i'm just going to kind of make these little tiny, oops, that one's going to be a little bigger than I expected, which is totally fine. Just kind of making them really small, making them, trying to do them in different angles. So it looks like the umbrellas have, have spun in a, again, in an organic and kind of natural type of way, as opposed to them all going in the same direction, which I don't believe would happen if we just let them all go out like this. And then these tiny ones you can hardly see, just kind of tapping my the tip of my brush on there. And now I'm gonna pick up some white paint with the black. I did not wash my brush, so just white with black on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick swipe down the pole of it, so something like that. And whatever happens, happens. Just let it make its own natural highlight to it. You don't have to, again, labor over it. Just let happen whatever's going to happen if one side turns out lighter than the other awesome that's what you know that's what nature would do so again just white and black on my brush to kind of give myself this this natural highlight on it and then i will in a second i'm going to bring a little bit of um white as an even brighter highlight on the tip but right now just kind of giving just one quick little highlight down these and again as I'm getting to the the smaller ones I'm hardly touching my canvas at all you could certainly use a smaller brush as well if you feel like you're not able to control the thickness of this brush you can take it again and spin it on the side of your palette that's going to give you a nice pointy tip but again these small ones don't need a lot of work just something to you know, make them resemble the other ones that you've done only in a much smaller version. And now I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and pick up just white and give myself a nice bright highlight up at the tippy top of them. So just white is going on the tippy top and this is going to give me an extra punch of brightness right at the tippy top of them. And again, it's just another little element that will help to well, that was kind of big <laughs> that will help to um, sell the story of the sunshine that we are witnessing these umbrellas are kind of going through because I wanted that the, the light water to indicate that they are out on a bright sunny day they don't need to be um, shielding anybody from the rain today so they uh, this bright little pop of white on the tip of that um, handle will give that extra bit of information that they are shiny and they're they're catching part of that sunshine right at the tip and then we are going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got all of these done you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the reflections of the handles. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'll be using black and white again. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be just giving a loose interpretation of those handles down in the water. So I'm using my watered down black paint and you can even put these slightly at an angle if you wanted to. So just come directly below that and then I'm just gonna kinda of give myself a quick swipe. You can even do the, the crook 
of the handle part while you're doing this as well. And I'm not laboring over this too much at all because I know that I'm going to be having um, the ripples in the water are going to be represented in a, in a minute that will take up a lot of this information and some of these will be hiding behind the reflections of other umbrellas. So I'm not really doing a, a heck of a lot in through here, just kind of pulling them out at a similar angle, maybe giving a little a little tip to them if I feel that I would be able to see it. So something like this. And then I will also be um, putting a little bit of the, the, the highlight on it as well. So you can see I'm just kind of whizzing by here. Just again, just to keep the authenticity of it, wanting to make sure that I have that little bit of a reflection in there from the handles. Now I'm picking up black plus a teeny tiny bit of white paint just to make sure that I have my um, highlight. And I'm not going to go full on with the with the brightness on this and with that um, white piece unless I felt like I I had to. I certainly would in that case scenario. But just kind of streaking in the black and the white just to make sure that I've got a little bit of that dual color or that contrast of those colors in in this reflection and then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step so once you've got your reflections of your handles in here you can put your small brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be putting ripples on top of the water, and this is just going to tie everything together. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are my light blue and white. Those will be my dominant colors, but there may be an occasion where I want to throw a little bit of orange into my ripples to indicate that there's maybe a little extra reflection in through there. So if you find a part where you want to incorporate the other colors within these water ripples you can certainly do that but we have all the reflections underneath and then these ripples are just intended to give us that extra bit of movement on the top so this is one of those steps where less is more you don't need to have a lot of paint on your brush in order to gain a lot of information so i'm going to be using a tiny bit of my blue paint and a teeny tiny bit of my white paint you can always add more as you go through the process, but it's tough to take it away once, you, once you've done it. And I'm just going to be kind of concentrating around the bottoms of the umbrellas with the brightest part and then just allowing it to kind of dissipate out um, beyond the umbrellas themselves. So I've got my white plus my blue on my brush and I'm just going to kind of give myself these little ripples that are going to indicate that the water is moving or is um, in being incorporated around and above the, the reflection of sorts. So that again, gives that viewer that information that this is water. It has that, you know, that extra amount of um, reflective quality to it. I just added a little bit more white to my brush, especially down at the bottom in through here. And I'm just kind of moving my brush in a um, wiggling type of a way with just the edge of my brush, so kind of left to right and wiggling it, so I have that, um, the m movement of that water. And again, just a little bit down below. You can always put a tiny bit of water on your brush as well, then just tap it off on your paper towel. This will put moisture in your brush, which will allow you to have some translucency and transparency, and also allow you to um, kind of blend it out so you have some light spots and dark spots. I'm going to do this for a while right around my um, my umbrellas just to give me this um, that most movement right around them. And then once I've got this on, I will start kind of incorporating it out towards the um, towards the darker area of the water. So again, right now I'm just using white plus a little bit of my light blue, giving myself some of these ripples right at the bottom. And I'm very mindful and careful to not over paint on my reflections because we have that reflection there. We did it. We shouldn't hide it. So this is just, I'm using the really right now on these smaller ones, the little tiny tip of my brush 
You can certainly use a smaller brush too if you wanted to. This is just giving me some more movement in through here, maybe a little bit around in through here. And again, just the tiny little tip of my brush. And if you wanted to use the small brush, you certainly could, or a smaller brush. And then once I've got that in there, it's looking pretty good. Don't forget this little guy back in through here. That's looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of my um, background blue with my dirty brush just so I can make sure that this all kind of works its way out with each other and we we have a good transition I don't want it to just be white and then and then black or, or white and then um, blue I want there to be some sort of um, transition so just picking up more of my water blue in order to get that to happen and if I want a little bit more on top of my reflection I can certainly do that or blend it out a little bit that totally works and again right now I'm just picking up some of my water blue and if you've gotten a pole like this that you want to work around work around it but if you bump into it like I just did you can certainly just come back on top and add a little corrective mark to that and then that's looking pretty good I think I want a little bit more white in my um, in my uh, ripple so I just picked up a tiny bit more white just to give myself a little more punch in this color in through here and then of course if you wanted to like I said you could certainly add a little bit of um, whatever color that that umbrella is above it and that will also give you that extra bit of um, information in that reflection so I'm just kind of tapping in a little bit of extra white in some of these areas and just finessing it a little bit more so I've got more more movement in the water and just giving it that extra bit of punch that's going to make me happy and then what I'm going to do is I think I might actually pull out my my medium brush just to give myself a little bit uh, more control. So I'm pulling out pulling out my medium brush. I'm going to add a little bit of orange and white into some of this reflection over here. Yeah, there we go. Just to give myself a little bit more um, color in this water that works. Yeah. Just making my making my painterly eye happy. <laughs> Bringing, I'm picking up a little bit more white so I can get a little bit more white in these guys up in through here just so we can have that movement and some sparkles in the water. And then you can fiddle with yours as much as you want. We're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your ripples in your water and you've finessed it as much as you want, you can put uh, your whatever brush is the large and the medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm going with my small brush. I'm gonna go with some black paint. I think I'm gonna go bottom left on this one. So small brush, black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very colorful image, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.